Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a unique way to utilize the Smart Narrative Visual by embedding it into a Report Tooltip page. Now, for a little bit of context, the Smart Narrative Visual is essentially an AI-powered text box that allows you to combine text with you know, other dynamic values that are being supplied by measures inside of your model. Now, as you can see here, you can customize it in a way that works inside of a tooltip providing a rich narrative experience that changes as you hover over each filter category on a visual. Now, needless to say, I'm really excited to show you this. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So if we come over here to sales amount, my brand name in class, and I start hovering over these, you'll notice this tooltip pop up that has both a narrative visual and a bullet chart visual below it. Now, my goal is to draw your attention to the top panel here and very specifically look at all the detail that is contained in there. It has a lot of natural text combined with various measures that I've harvested and put into there. And if I move this mouse around, we can see that a lot of the values change each time. Everything that's underlined in there is a measure that I've included in this that actually passes through the filter context from any of the elements that I'm hovering over into this tooltip page. So there's really unique ways to be able to spin and create a story in here that tells details with your data depending on what information you want to convey. In my case, as you can see, what I really wanted to do was be able to show values, percentages, a few KPI icons, and even a top selling product name, which also changes category by category down there at the very bottom. So let's go over to the report tooltip page and I'll show you how I made this. Now, some of you might be wondering about the visual at the bottom. And I hate to disappoint you, but I will be doing that in a future video because I found some really fun ways to utilize this custom visual, which is a bullet chart, and some ways to do some really unique comparisons of subtotals and grand totals. So that's going to be a follow-up video to this that's going to come out next week. But for this video, my primary focus is this rich text box we have here at the top that has a combination of raw text that I've typed in mashed together with some values in here as well. And I want to walk through how I made this. Now to start with, this is all text that was typed in. And if you're on a Windows machine, you can hit the Windows key and colon button, and that will pop up an emoji menu that allows you to search for, say, money. And then in this case, I put a bag of money right there to go next to total sales. So there's actually a really easy way to add any kind of emoji icons into your text if you wanted to. And in the case of this underlying value here, let me go ahead and delete this, and then I'm gonna add a new one in here. So delete that, and now let's go ahead and get rid of this screen and go to value. And then I'm going to search for total sales. And that's a value in here. But also notice that I've mentioned that the sales value in here based on the text is for this month. So total sales this month. And then I have an option for calendar date, which I want to do. So I'm going to select that. Here's the value down here. Now notice that this value changes. If I just do total sales and get rid of this here, there we go. Notice that the net value is in the millions. Total sales this calendar month. 460,000. So you can see the preview changing and it will pass through any formatting that is coming from the model over here. Otherwise, you can also custom format it. So I also want to name this here. I'm going to call this total sales current month. There we go. Hit save and put a little space there. Now this is going to change whenever I update my model or use a slicer selection. And notice, by the way, if you name it, they do get custom friendly names in here versus just the hashtag. So it is recommended to have them all named. And the same thing was for everything in here as well. This was a measure that I had in my model. And you might notice that if you go to values in here, you can't just search for a measure from your list. You do have to ask a natural language question in here. And this uses the Q&A functionality built into Power BI. So depending on your model configuration, what synonyms you've used, it may have a varying degree of effectiveness in terms of how well it works. Uh, typically, I actually have been putting a lot of my logic in the measures and just calling upon the measure names here. So go ahead and cancel out of this. If I click this one, I have the option to edit it, and you can see that I have a measure called sales as the percentage of class grand total. So to give some context again, let's go ahead and one more time come back to the report page, hover over any of these in here, and this is what it's doing is it's ignoring the class filter down here. So it's getting that 2.9 million as a percentage of that column total, which is the 33% of the total value for Contoso. Go ahead and navigate back to the narrative visual tooltip page. And with most of these, honestly, I actually have a bunch of measures over here in the DAX section for smart narrative. I did a lot of really cool and interesting things where I, again, did the percentage of the class total in here with just a standard divide, the grand total in there. Now, my goal for this is more to show the 
functionality and usefulness of the smart narrative visual. Now, my goal for this really is to show the functionality and usefulness of the smart narrative visual. So this file that I will have provided in my blog's download section will have all of the measures in there, but as the goal of this video isn't really to walk through every single measure and the DAX logic, I'm not gonna go into all of the details here for sake of brevity and to keep the video short. But as you can see, I did create a couple of measures in here. Um, the title as well, just for that little branding at the top, that's really just a button that I have with centered text and then a title being returned with a couple concatenations and then also some product rankings that just gives me the name and the value, which is how I'm able to get down at the bottom the name for the top selling product and also the value in there as well. And coming back to my report page, just to show that off one more time, it works very well. The text that I have hard coded stays as is, but all of those dynamic values really get to move around with it and change as I hover over all of these different elements. And one of my two cents as far as design when this goes is I find it's useful to underline the values that will change to help call out specifically in your text or body of text where those values are that are going to be dynamic. So it helps the customers see the difference between what you've kind of typed in and hard coded versus what values will be expected to change. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.